What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. You join me inside the 2021 Chevrolet Corvette convertible. And I am very excited to drive this car for a couple reasons. When I drove the C8 Coupe last year, I was hugely impressed by it. And so I knew another go at this C8 platform was gonna be fun. And two, my own journey as an automotive enthusiast is in some ways connected to the Corvette because though my own father wasn't really a car lover and therefore my car guy genes came from a friend's dad who was an avid car collector and enthusiast, my dad did have a soft spot for one car and that was the Corvette. So when it was time for him to buy something sporty and fun to daily drive, he bought a C5 convertible and then a C6 convertible. So I have some kinship with the Corvette nameplate but with that, a more critical eye, because I knew what those cars were good at and what they were not good at. So in today's review, we're gonna check out the exterior and interior of the Corvette convertible, then take it for a drive to see if it's an improvement over the coupe and if it's one of the best value sports slash supercar convertibles you can buy. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is, the 21 Chevy Corvette Stingray Convertible. This one is finished in Arctic White. It's kind of your standard no cost white paint color that is contrasted by a number of black metallic accents, like here in the nose, in the air inlets, door mirrors, nacelles, air inlet on the side, and that spoiler out back. You see the spoiler, you know this one has the Z51 performance package, more on that later. I do quite like the white on black. What I'm not so keen on is this yellow on carbon flash metallic graphics package. These decals on the hood give me a visual groan here. You're trying too hard. It's unnecessary for such a sharp nose Coming to a point here, looking great with the Corvette logo, the hard creases on the hood that are, yes, somewhat subdued when the car is painted white. But this is just unnecessary. Save your money and leave those off, please. The slender LED headlights and daytime running lights look wonderful. Large air inlets bringing cool air to the intercoolers. The carbon flash metallic details, those bisecting them more black metallic accents for this lower bumper piece. Corvette spelled out there, you're hopefully not gonna to have to put a front license plate. That would kind of ruin the front end for me. A more subdued plastic chin splitter. Hopefully you'll not scrape that, but if you're worried about it, then you can get, like this car has equipped, the hydraulic nose lift. That is something my dad, who had a C5 and then a C6, and took out a million of these lower spoiler pieces, the piece under that, just chunked off, was like, oh my gosh, Lamborghinis have this nose lift system. When is Chevy gonna bring that to the Corvette? Well, congratulations. <laughs> you have that option now. And it does work very well. Not only does that lift give you the clearance you need, but it does so quickly. You hit the button on the center console, three to four seconds later, the nose has popped up and you're clearing the steep driveway or the speed bump or whatever. These wheels are the Trident multi-spoke gray painted design. They're optional 19s in the front and 20s in the rear. I don't love them, I'll be honest, because they look too busy. Even for a car like this with so much going on, these are distracting. They look like a five spoke design on top of another design. And if it were me, I would just take off the five spoke and be left with a gray painted wheel behind that because I, I really like that look. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. They are wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, fantastic rubber, 245 section in the front and 305s in the rear. And we see, and you're gonna call me a hypocrite now because I didn't like the graphics, but I, I love the acid yellow painted brake calipers. Corvette and Z51 written out there. The Z51 is hidden by the spoke, but the Z51 brakes are upgraded to 13.3 inch front rotors and 13.8 inch rear four piston Brembo calipers, both front and rear. Excellent brakes. Look at this. Look at that deep cut. Look at the shadow there, the overhang from that crease in the side. 
carbon flash metallic paint for the door mirrors and for the lip of this large side inlet sending cool air to the mid-mounted engine. Giant nacelles, important for rollover protection of course, but also looking super cool in this car. The profile to spend a second here. It's what the Corvette has needed all this time. And the Corvette convertible looks even better than the coupe in my opinion. It finally looks super. You can understand and forgive the people who don't know cars and go, oh, that's a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. Because it has the exotic look, the exotic proportions. It's the design development, the leap that Corvette has wanted for so long, but they were handicapped by that front engine design. It's here. It looks amazing. Rear three quarter looks cool, but then you get to the rear. And for me, I lose a bit of enthusiasm because it's so rectangular. And from here up looks just too Camaro to me or too last generation Corvette. There's not enough development where they have done to the nose and to the profile. This is just, it's, it's cheapening up the look to me. You do have functional ventilation here. And then down below that, we have squared off exhaust ports, which if you've been watching this channel for long enough to have seen the Cooper view that I did of the Corvette, you know that I'm not a fan of this. I want my oval or just round exhaust ports. The square look is just weird. The diffuser is super cool though. Juts out crazy far and has a nice design to it like the diffuser. Square exhaust ports, no. Tail light design, nah, not my favorite. The spoiler for the Z51 package does look better on the convertible than it does the coupe, in my opinion. I like the stinger in the back. It's just cool. You don't get to see the engine like you do in the coupe, but you do have this ventilation with the carbon flash metallic paint on that. And just this look right here before you get to this. This look right here, all super, all awesome. Very much into it. We're at a 90% love for the design. I like everything up until the straight shot of the rear zoomed into like here. Everything else, fantastic. All right, let's check out that interior. Bonus points on the way in four. Capless fueling. Why doesn't everyone do that? This is the range topping 3LT trim. And with that, you're gonna get keyless entry so you can leave the key in your pocket and there is no door handle to pull on the C8, so instead you put your hand under this overhang and feel around for a button that you press up and pull in one smooth motion and reveal design excellence. It cannot be overstated how much of an improvement this interior is over previous generation Corvettes. If you've spent time in the C6 and C7, this is gonna feel unrecognizable. The level of effort Chevy clearly put into making an enticing and yet logically laid out cabin is it's just overwhelming. The interior color here, they call cool sky gray or sky cool gray, I can't remember, slash strike. So you get these yellow accents, a yellow seatbelt. I'm such a sucker for colored seatbelts. GT2 sport bucket seats are standard with the 3LT, carbon fiber buckets, all this nice, nice leather, the Corvette logo on the seat back, yellow contrast stitched, perforated gray inserts, heating and ventilation on these seats. They're power adjustable, Stingray tread plates, so much of this nice leather on the door panels with a yellow contrast stitch, Bose Performance Series sound system with a bass that seriously kicks, memory seats, two position, carbon fiber inserts are gonna be an optional upgrade. You get that on the center console and on the door inserts. This is the button for your power folding hardtop. This is for the glass partition. One touch windows, power folding door mirrors. Below that, so you got a button to get in, a button to get out, no, ha no handles here. Lock and unlock. And then below that are your front and rear trunk releases. Nice feeling carpet in here. Let's try the front trunk first. This compartment is fairly deep, leg test. 
and it does have a net to hold loose items from going all over the place, but it isn't super wide. So uh, something that can conform to the space, a duffel bag, is gonna fit nicely in here. Windshield wiper fluid. The rear trunk is much more accommodating. Very wide and deep. You can fit a set of golf clubs in here, maybe even two. I think they said you can fit two. You've got that same netting for loose items. And the best part about the convertible is with the coupe, you got that T-top, it's cool. You can make that kind of a convertible thing, but then you got to store that roof. They have a spot in the trunk, but then the trunk is not usable. Now you only have that little front trunk. With the convertible, the power folding hardtop stows here above the engine, and then you still have this massive trunk to use. Very cool. And it's a sock close. Back to the cabin. Another option on this car is the microfiber suede wrapping for this squared off steering wheel. The yellow center stripe there. It's more suede around the airbag cover with the yellow contrast stitch. Let's hop inside, which is pretty easy to do. You grab onto the A-pillar and lower your butt on down, close the door, and then you'll be greeted by these awesome mid-engine Corvette graphics on the infotainment and gauge cluster. Let's start the car now. Bring in that V8 to life. And then let's raise the power folding hardtop, which you do by just pulling up on this tab here. Makes sense, pull up, top comes up. The lid and now the two-piece hardtop. Laying into place, locking. The lid closes and the windows finally come up. The whole process takes about 16 seconds, so not lightning fast, but also not an eternity for a power folding hardtop. Press this button and let's get out of the car, but on our way out, turn it off because I'm going to show you some things. To get the power folding hardtop in body color matching, you have to pay like 1200 bucks extra, but it looks cool because with the blackness cells, it's like floating. And the design is just awesome. I don't miss the coupe. Yeah, it would be nice to see the engine, but without that, it's still okay because you got this recessed glass and the, the big nacelles. It's given me supercar vibes. Very much on board. Aesthetically, to start at least, I am preferring the convertible to the coupe. Hard top functionality, but then the convenience and comfort of a convertible top. Now, I wanna show you the key. Got a lot of stuff on this key. Turn it over, you got the Corvette logo and this metal strip. Good weight to it. Plastic, brush metal look on the outside with the Corvette logo. And then you got unlock and lock. Remote start, so if I wanna do that, I lock the car and then press this twice. Car starts up and a fuff. Then press it again to make it quiet. Then you've got front trunk release and rear trunk release, each of which you press twice. You've got a panic button, and then you have this other button down here to lower the hard top, which we'll see if it works. It's only worked for me like twice. Trying unlock and then lowering it. There we go. like the little arms that come out and rest and you're done. But it's so cool that you can do that remotely with the key fob. There are specific conditions and you can't then raise the top back up. You can only lower it from out here, but that's pretty cool. A lot of stuff you can do with this key. Getting back in, do the same trick, lower yourself in, close the door. More graphics, but we're gonna skip that and just start it up. And then take a peek around this cabin. One of the things that stands out immediately is the spine of climate controls, which is controversial 
And at first I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's too much. But now I really appreciate it. One, you still get physical buttons for all of these settings. And two, they just integrated it really well into a design piece. I like the total like driver focus of this cabin and this helps, but it also is pretty intuitive. So you get used to the fact that the driver's controls are up here and the passenger controls are down here. You have toggles for the climate. So you can easily kind of do that without having to look at it. You press up, you know that. Your seat ventilation and heating, you'll learn where those are. And there are three stages for each. Heating, ventilation, losing my voice. Auto climate is there. Where you want the, the air to go, the level of the air is yet another toggle. So again, easy to find without having to look at it while you're driving. This I like. Wasn't sure about it first, now I really like it. You've got suede wrapping for the drive mode selector top piece, yellow stitched, says D mode there. You got the Corvette logo embedded within that. Your drive modes, you can rotate through here. Right now we're in tour. If you go left, then you enter my mode. This is a custom mode. It's like an individual mode for another car. You can set up like your, how, how much uh, exhaust noise you want or the weight of the steering. Crank right. We'll go to sport. We'll see it'll change up the display a bit. It's not the fastest changes there, but now there's a red accent to it. One more to take you to track. And this really changes it up. You got a horizontal tachometer right there and just your performance information around that. Crank left. We'll go back to tour mode. Your drive selections are here in a vertical format. So you got park as a button. Reverse, this makes a lot of sense. Pull back to go to reverse. Neutral is a button. Drive is also pull back though. Kind of would have liked, I don't know, pull forward or something. Then M to take you to manual mode. These I learned very quickly. Cup holders here, nothing remarkable about those. Not big. Center console, press this tab, open it up. Pretty shallow, but you do have two USB ports, one USB-A, one USB-C, and an aux jack. Back here, wireless smartphone charging in the 3LT option. And there are molds, so it'll hold your phone. It's not gonna go rattling around. Eight inch touchscreen infotainment. I love this system. It's so fast, I can't get over it. Super quick, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay. I'm using my phone right now, but I'll show you B-roll of that. It's just smart. It's got a Wi-Fi hotspot, great resolution, big, big enthusiast fan of this. This is awesome. The digital gauge cluster, reconfigurable as we saw with the drive modes, but you can also change up different information with this toggle on the right. You can go through and have it be simplified, go through your options, maintenance, audio information, some performance data. You can have your zero to 60 timer, your lap timer, and a G meter up here. One more to the left is your trip computer and those other telemetry data things, fuel economy, so forth. On the left-hand side, not much you can reconfigure there. Your fuel gauge is off to the bottom right. Bottom left is your oil temperature and your tack is right in the center. Above the gauge cluster on this 3LT model is a head-up display showing your speed, what gear you're in and the posted speed limit. If you go to the right, taking you out of tour and into sport, now it's a tachometer, G-meter, and your speed. One more to the right into track, and now it's just a shift timer and your gear and speed. One more drive mode to talk about, and that is Z mode here on the steering wheel. Think of this as push to pass power. So instead of having to crank right into sport drive mode there, you can just press this on the steering wheel. Now you've got that improved throttle response and performance traction management. Off to the bottom left, you've got your cruise control settings. No adaptive cruise control or lane keep assist or any of the other driver aids. You do have blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic on this 3LT model though. Nice large aluminum paddles on the back of the steering wheel with plenty of travel. Those feel solid. Favorite controls here in the bottom left, volume on the bottom right, smartphone answering system, and then your heated steering wheel control for the 3LT model. Plastic for the turn signal stocks. However, it's really high quality, soft feeling plastic. And the turn signal show up just to the right and left of that tachometer and you do have one touch. Windshield wipers are off to the right in that same high quality plastic. And the housing for the gauge cluster with the carbon fiber of this carbon fiber interior trim, the leather wrapping, the yellow contrast stitching, the layering of the gray leather on the black especially here as it transitions to the passenger side. It looks so cool. 
And they even stitched this little panel here so it isn't just a blank piece of leather. They cared about the design, it just shows. Let's hop to the passenger side though because I wanna see what that looks like. Once again, you can use the A-pillar to lower pretty easily into your seat, especially when the top is off, and close up that door where we see two position memory seats for the passenger side, carbon fiber inserts like the driver's side, one touch windows, lock and unlock, and your push to get out. The design of the horizontal air vents here with a kink in it is super cool. I like the toggles, got a knurled finish on those. Your glove box releases this button right here. Pretty decent sized and wrapped in the microfiber suede. This cabin is clearly focused on the driver, but you know what, as a passenger, it makes it such that I feel like I'm in a sidecar and that's awesome. And at six feet tall with a seat all the way back and reclined, I can fully stretch out my legs, so I've got space there. My visibility is good. This is an experience, and it's still comfortable. I've got a place to rest my arm on both sides. No complaints about the passenger side. And then it's time for our big bottle test. So we're gonna grab our bottle and see where it fits. Cup holders, I said they were small before, and indeed they are too small. Center console, that looked shallow before, and indeed, it is too shallow. Door pocket, I don't know. Yeah, I do, that's not gonna fit. We're not doing the glove box, and that means, unfortunately, the new Corvette convertible does not pass the big bottle test. With that, we're just gonna start it up. Let's hit Z mode to open the baffles and the exhaust. Rev it up, oh yes. No soft limiter here. And before we get driving, I'll just say, if you've been watching this video and you enjoy it, please like, comment, and share it. And if you wouldn't mind, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. It would be a huge, huge help. Let's get to the drive. Should we start with launch control? I think we should. Let's go to track drive mode. Click over to on the D mode selector here. Hit traction control twice to bring up performance traction management. You can go to any of these settings. I'm going to choose sport. Hold your foot hard on the brake. Give it full gas. Go. Wow. Bit of wheel spin off the line, but then hooked up and gone. done perfectly. The Corvette convertible will hit 60 miles per hour in just 2.9 seconds. That's amazing. Absolutely crushes its competitors as we'll see when I talk about them in a moment. 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 motor that makes 490 horsepower. We're going to do another launch control. I think we can do it better makes 490 horsepower in its standard guys 495 horsepower if you get the z51 performance package like we have here so you get the extra five horsepower from the exhaust system but the most appealing part about the z51 performance package is the electronic limited slip rear differential you do get other goodies like performance suspension performance brakes upgraded cooling system but it's all about that limited slip Still crazy fun. Yeah, it, it's a properly quick car. Let's take it out of track mode. First off, let's turn track control on fully. Let's go to tour drive mode now. It's the most subdued, relaxed drive mode because it's a convertible and I brought us down by the water. Wanted to take us on a field trip. Does this car ride nicely? Is it an easy cruiser? Would you want to even daily it? That's what we gotta find out. Oh, these views are gonna be good. Well, first off, I noticed immediately that the wind buffeting, the turbulent moving air inside this cabin is intense. You're probably hearing a lot of it right now. Do you have your headphones in, by the way? Because you should. Look at that, it's beautiful. A lot of moving air inside this cabin above 
40 miles per hour. Below 40, it's chill. Above 40, you're probably having shouting matches with your partner here. Not because you're upset, but just because you want to communicate. But the moving air aside, the only other critique I have for it as a daily driver is the visibility, which is awful. Top up or down, it's really pretty bad. Thankfully, we've got blind spot monitoring in this car. And as we'll see when you put the top up, this turns into a digital rear view mirror. Let's test the turning radius at this moment. And while we're doing that, let's put the top up. So you just pull up on this tab and you can do this at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. Conversion, pro conversion process happening. And it's down. And we're down again completely. Windows are gonna come up now. Now with the top up, the wind noise isn't just better as we would expect. It's actually just genuinely good. This is the benefit of having a hard top convertible as opposed to a soft top. It just effectively, tur effectively turns into a coupe. There's perhaps a slight bit more wind noise than in a coupe, tiny bit more road noise, but this is just, it's just great. And the ride quality is awesome. We have the optional Magna Ride dampers so they're just in fractions of a second, picking up on the bumps and bruises in the road and just ironing out all the kinks so that your ride is smooth. And that engine, the tenacity we felt with the launch control just kind of just subdues itself in tour drive mode and it becomes very easy to drive. The throttle input is very modest the eight speed dual clutch automatic gearbox is so fluid in the way it works its way through the gears. Attempting to get you to a higher gear to maximize the fuel economy, 15 city, 27 highway, and 20 combined MPG, I believe. I may be wrong. I'll be corrected with the card. And so it's not perhaps as bad in terms of fuel economy as you might expect for a naturally aspirated V8 motor car. And a lot of that is credited to this excellent gearbox. In addition to the fact that you can have cylinder deactivation at certain cruising speeds, under the right conditions, it will deactivate four of those cylinders and optimize the fuel economy. The perspective I have on Corvettes, the C5, the C6, and even the time I spent in the C7 as a journalist is of a rougher driving experience than this. This is so easy and pleasant to drive around in. And yet, it's edging into supercar territory with the mid-mounted powertrain. The fact that we do have that ELSD, we're no longer riding on leaf springs for goodness sakes. And this dual clutch gearbox isn't just smooth, it's also really quick, as we'll demonstrate in just a moment. I'm gonna hit C mode here on the steering wheel, improve that throttle response, and then I'm gonna hit M on the drive selector here to take over manual shifts. And put this gearbox through a bit of a test. Man, are those rifle quick shifts. Insanely quick. I can feel the paddle soon. What a gearbox. <laughs> wow. I am floored by how rapidly it works its way down and up through these gears. That's amazing. 
Yeah, this is a this is a superb transmission. In its variability, the fact that it's so smooth and then becomes a true performance gearbox the moment you pull the paddle. As I mentioned, the engagement on these paddles is also wonderful. And the engine, I mean, the fact that you're not having to deal with forced induction, waiting for things, or being in the right part of the power band to have the peak power, it's just, it's so progressive. How about the handling though? Get hard on these brakes here. A little bit of trail brake just tucks in. Wow. That was very tidy felt super stable through the corner there. There was even a decreasing radius corner. That's the first time I've done that corner, so uh, I wasn't really anticipating that. But it just felt so planted. And the brake feel, there was a little, a little bit more travel than I anticipated before getting into the bite. But it did haul the vehicle down, assuredly. Okay, let's gather up our thoughts on the new Corvette convertible. These seats are extremely comfortable. The ride quality is very docile. The transmission proved to be extremely smooth and fluid. It was very, very easy to drive. So yes, as a, as a, you know, if you want to just get out and enjoy the car at a more subdued pace, it does that supremely well. Performance. There are, there's so much of it. <laughs> Straight line acceleration, as we experience with launch control, is rapid. The top speed I didn't mention is 180 miles per hour. And in a corner, it feels extremely stable. And it's funny because when I drove the 2020 C8 Coupe, I felt a lot of that plow from, from the nose, myself and several other journalists but I didn't feel that quite as much in this car. Apart from the less desirable, in my opinion, rear end design and the turbulent wind noise, this car is outstanding. It brings together so many of the things that the previous generations of Corvette that I knew and loved for, the, for what they did just didn't have. They were miserable to operate on a daily basis. They were not cars you wanted to spend all that much time in. This, you could easily see as something that's practical, the front and rear trunks. It's pleasant to ride in. It's got all of the luxuries that are available to it. This is the 3LT, and so it has you know every option there. It's $94,000 as tested. But it's all available, okay? That was never an option in previous Corvettes. And then it, it clearly has the performance that the Corvette has always had, but it brings it to a new level with that mid-engine design. $68,000 will get you in the door for the hardtop Corvette convertible. And I think that's an incredible bargain. But let's talk about competition. People are going to cross shop vehicles like the Jaguar F-Type convertible, the P450, the newest one. V8 powered, 444 horsepower, $74,000 to start. 0 to 60 is 4.3 seconds for that car, so well off a second slower than this. Top speed, 177 miles per hour, so slower than the top speed of this. Then you've got the Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet, a vehicle you can, frankly, attractively get with a manual transmission still, whereas this, of course, you cannot. But that one starts at $115,000. It only makes 379 horsepower, it does have four seats, the rear ones being almost useless, unless you're a very small child. Zero to 60 for that one, 4.2 seconds, top speed, 
180 miles per hour, so tied with this in terms of top speed. Cargo capacity is just four cubic feet, but then you've got the rear seat space as overflow. And then let's kick it up a notch. How about $156,000 for the Audi R8 Spider? Now that's a true supercar convertible. Naturally aspirated V10, 532 horsepower, zero to 60, 3.7 seconds, I believe. So still well off the pace of the zero to 60 in this car. Cargo capacity is not great. I think there's like four cubic feet of space or something like that in there. And so with those competitors laid out there, with the exception of the R8 in terms of drama to the look, which is, it's just a sensational looking car, and that NAV10 sounds amazing, the other cars that it competes against don't really have anything more than this does in terms of visual appeal or excitement. And when it turns to fit and finish this cabin, this, as I said, is fully decked out but fully decked out at $94,000 versus thinking of all the options you'd have to add to the competition. And they still wouldn't be, in my opinion, much better than this. I'm kind of floored by this car. I like it even more than the coupe. It makes even more sense as a convertible for a small premium of like $6,000 of the coupe. Wow. I think the fact that I know the previous generations of this car intimately well helped me truly appreciate what Chevy has done with this new generation. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you again next time.